in Dune, the nobles of House Atreides are given stewardship over the planet Arrakis and its spice trade. And that is all you're going to get out of me because this film is best experience blind. Hello everybody, my name is Josh, your movie apprentice, and we are looking at Denis Villeneuve's space epic Dune, which I will say straight away needs to be seen in the biggest screen possible. If IMAX 3D is available to you, definitely watch it in that. Because Dune, it's had a lot of hype built around it, and I will say straight away that I have not seen the original Dune. But Denis Villeneuve has a way of telling a story that is really long, but it never gets boring. This film is two and a half hours of pure soundtrack that guides us through the story. Hans Zimmer's score, good luck to anyone trying to beat that when it comes to awards season because this is a soundtrack that I can listen to again and again and again. It really heightens the emotions when it needs to and it remains calm but still present whenever it's a quieter peaceful moment. It is a slow movie. If you're going to go into it expecting a massive Star Wars space opera, no. This is basically politics in space as a whole political subtext and a close tension to war that rise the line with this one this is definitely a part one of two they better green light that sequel because the whole build up in this is really well done even though a lot of this movie is just setting up for the part two it gives us enough high points and low points and devastating moments and great epic set pieces it makes it worth while it's not the most explosive of movies there are battle scenes and there are action sequences but they are generally quite played down when it came to the sound design no matter what the score always overrode the actual sound design element and i feel that very much worked in the film's favor it has an all-star cast in this including zendaya timothy chalamet jason momoa rebecca ferguson Javier Bardem, there are just a lot of people in this. Oscar Isaac. Now, I will say right away as well that some of these actors are not really present in this movie all too much. Javier Bardem, Zendaya, and Dave Bautista all are in this and have a couple of scenes, but for a two and a half hour movie, you would think they'll be in it a little bit more. This film is two and a half hours long, yet it never gets boring, even though it's a very much a slow burn. Just the cinematography and the costume designs and the set designs really engross you into this world. And I love how this film does not babysit its audience. Imagine you watch Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, but you take out a good chunk of that intro that explains everything about the world. This film gives you small crumbs to latch on to, but it doesn't spell everything out. It gives you just enough to understand what's going on or to make assumptions of what's going on. But it never holds your hand and guides you to the answers. You've got to piece it together yourself as you're going through it. It never explains some of the powers that our lead, played by Timothy Chalamet, projects. But after a while, you do buy it, despite the initial strangeness of these scenarios. In terms of the performances, Rebecca Ferguson is by far the standout for me. This is a very melodramatic movie when it came to the acting. Not saying any of the actors were bad in it per se, but a lot of the performances are very straight to the point and formal. So whenever a character does have a big emotional moment or a big emotional outburst, it stands out a lot more because a lot of the dialogue was delivered previously is in a very formal, noble way that was just very matter-of-fact. And while it threw me a little bit at the start of the movie, it did grow on me, and I felt the film was all the better for it. This is very much an experience. This is a journey you're being taken through, through the cinematography, the direction, and the sound, and the characters are just there along for the ride with you. It has some truly devastating moments and truly amazing set pieces the sandworms do not disappoint they are terrifying whenever you see the sand moving and you know they're coming it is fantastic honestly my only problem with june is 
Apart from it, definitely won't be for everyone. There will be some casual popcorn blockbuster only fans going into this. That will be disappointed that it's not a big space film full of explosions and lasers. But also, I will say, there was never a moment in this that made me think, damn, I love movies. And that's what really pushes it down for me. For me, for a film to be truly great, there needs to be that instant where I just suddenly sit back and realise I am watching a movie right now and this is why I love movies. I never quite got that from this movie. This film is very consistent in how good it is. It is way above average from the get-go and it never fluctuates. Some films will start off very middling and then ramp up. Some films will start off middling and then go down. Some will do a little bit of a wave, but June stays up here and it just stays consistent throughout. There are some great relationships formed between the characters. I particularly enjoyed the relationship between Jason Moa and Timothy Chalamet's characters in this. Their friendship is fantastic. I would like to have seen more of Duncan, which was Jason Momoa's character, because there are some things that we are told of but never actually get to see, which was a little of a letdown for me. But yes, June well and truly lives up to the hype. The cinematography is god tier. The score is absolutely fantastic and it is directed to hell. Before I get into my grave, if you like what you see on this channel, click that like button, subscribe for more content like this coming all the time. Got a lot of films I saw at London Film Festival that I need to get through over the next couple of weeks. But without further ado, Let's grade June, shall we? So June, like I say, it's an experience. The soundtrack and the cinematography are second to none. It is directed to hell. While the performances can be quite monotone and formal in most parts, it does help emphasise the more emotional beats where a character truly feels something and becomes more human as opposed to the political facade that they are expected to be. Apart from lacking the... I love movies moment and how this film will definitely not be for every single person that goes to the cinema. It definitely will have its niche and I am a little worried that that might detract from it. But if you're wanting a good old fashioned experience, then go watch June. It very much feels like the first part of an epic story. It is like Lord of the Rings in space without as many fantasy elements in it. It is very political. And I would definitely recommend you check it out as soon as you can. Overall, I'm going to have to say that June 2021 is a great cup of tea. So Denis Villeneuve's Dune, have you seen it? If you have, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Again, you like what you're doing on the channel, click the like button and subscribe. Coming up on the channel, I think my next one to review is probably going to be Brothers Keeper, which is a Turkish thriller film. And I'll probably get a review of Spencer out shortly, as well as French Dispatch as well. But until next time, everybody, my name is Josh. I have been your movie apprentice, and I'll see you. Tomorrow.